I actually auditioned for Andromeda to play the role of Andromeda five years ago. And um, I didn't get that part, which uh, was the same year that I ended up doing Baywatch. And then Lexa was, uh, got the part of Andromeda. And she ended up pregnant this year, and so they needed somebody to come in and do a lot of the stuff that she does on the show. Not replace her, because she's still on the show, and she's still a really vital part of the show. But they needed somebody to come in and, and do uh, a lot of the stuff that she couldn't do. So they auditioned girls, and I beat out a lot of girls, and by the grace of God, here I am. I read this and I thought, how fun would that be to play? And when I got here, I was actually more interested when I met the people that I was working with. Lisa Ryder came up to me my first day, extended her hand and was so sweet. Kevin is always very welcoming. The entire cast has just been a treat to work with. And that made it more interesting to me when I got here. Um, because it could have gone any way, any which way. You know, they are an established family of actors working together on the show together for four years. And then here comes this new girl they hardly know anything about, you know, and they were all so welcoming and then the crew of course was fantastic. Why don't you meet me back at the lab? Are you gonna be safe? Yes. Mm. Good company, Harper? Very. Well, I grew up in Redondo Beach, California, and uh, I lived there and went to school there until I was about 26, and then I met a man, fell in love, and moved to Vancouver with him. He was on a TV series called Poltergeist, The Legacy, and we had a child, and we have lived in all different parts of the world uh, doing different kinds of work together and separately. Um, and uh, we're now separated, we're divorced, but we still have our son together here in Vancouver. I uh, started acting about 10, 12 years ago, and I've been really blessed to have been working a lot since then. I just decided one day that I wanted to start taking drama school. I went to a dramatic arts program for three years and started auditioning my butt off and knocking down doors and getting breaks here and there. TV series is my favorite kind of work um, because you get the character down and then you get to explore even more. Um, and the crew becomes part of your family and you get really close with a couple key people and you start to really fall in love with your character. Um, I fell in love with the character I played on The Invisible Man for the Sci-Fi Channel. Uh, her name was Alex Monroe. She was very tough, five-star secret agent and I really enjoyed playing her. I loved playing Dawn on Baywatch Hawaii. She was the atypical Baywatch babe. I was athletic, I was short hair, hardly any makeup, not very sexy. They wanted me to be the kinesiologist, the lifeguard, the real tough broad, and that was really fun. But my favorite role, honest to God, is this role. Hello, boys. <laughs> Doyle is a creation of Harper's. Okay, I'm impressed. We've been on Seafra for three years away from Dylan and the crew, and Doyle was built to be Harper's protector. My main programming is to protect Harper in the beginning. You're gonna wanna let go of him. <gasps> oh. Look at this. He built me as a Barbie doll. I'm in head to toe pink, hot pink, light pink, and baby bubblegum pink. You know, as a plaything. But uh, you know, he doesn't play with me. I'm also very tough as an android. But I'm built with human responses, human impulses, organic feelings, organic impulses. So I can feel. I, I have an episode where I kiss a man, and I can actually feel the warmth of his lips. I feel my pulse racing and the warmth of your lips. How can I feel all that and not be human? You know, I'm an android, so it's pretty amazing the way he's built me. I c get cut and I think I see blood, and when I see it, it's red blood. Um, I feel actually in one episode, I have an electrical charge akin to an orgasm. Ah. 
Connor Logic to the rescue. Let's get out of here. Hold on, hold on. I'm too turned on. I mean, up. I have to cycle back down first. I'm actually learning new things that uh, Harper has programmed into me day by day. But and I, he's also given me free will. So I come into my own. I get this real awesome kinship with Dylan. And so I, I, I want to become part of his crew, part of his team. I can help out. I can help get the ship back into um, space. I can help with the machinery. I can help be the brain of the ship. Andromeda, Rami, Doyle. I don't even know what to call myself. Tell you what, why don't I just call you friend? I play her as a woman when there are subtleties that are written that way, and I play her as an android when we're on the ship and when there are um, communications between channels and communications between other people, um, like Becca on the Maru, um, when there is a lot of technical um, techno babble. I, I, I play her very straight. We have got to work this out. Are you suggesting a compromise? No, a solution, now. I suggest leveling the playing field by scrambling all communication and blast C for five with a Gaussian noise field. Or shift the wavelength of the comm link, focus the beam, and we'll cut him out. Or kill all non-essential power supplies and draw power to the weapon system. Or discharge the magnetron capacitor bank for a single surge of power. Or do you mean a single high power blast? will perhaps, perhaps result, result in, in enough, enough power, power to create, create an opening. I refuse to believe that Harper didn't program into me a vast personality. So things are funny to me, even when we're in the midst of, you know, something a little more technical. But I'm also very serious when it is required to be serious. But I also am equipped with a sense of humor. So I'm not, you know, I'm not the bitch, I'm not the broad, I'm not the hardcore you know, straight-laced, uh, energy-less android. I'm not robotic at all, but um, very smart and very, uh, very tough at times and knowledgeable. And I just am getting more and more knowledgeable the more I give myself to the ship. But I've played her as a woman a bit in the last few episodes that we've shot because the, it was sort of written that way. Um, and I've made up some things in my head, like I really wish I knew what it was like to dance. Doyle wishes so bad um, that she knew what it was like to dance. And there's a scene in one of the episodes where she asks Becca, I ask her why, what is it like? Please tell me what it's like to dance, I wanna know. And then I've got this little fantasy worked up in my head that I wanna know what it's like to dance with and then I see a big thing in the sky and I have to cut to that and go and save the ship, <laughs> you know? So I cut from human to android. I know who I am. I am a warship and I don't like running away from a fight. As I evolve into my own, I opt for a uh, different costume. I was gonna say more comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> something a little livelier, you know, something a little less pink, something a little more seafarian, seafarian, something a little uh, more part uniform style for the sake of becoming part of the crew. You know, before in pink, I stood out completely. <laughs> Wait till you see it, I'm really. And now I'm becoming more part of integrating into the, the crew. So I'm more in a uniform now. But also, um, for comfort's sake, absolutely, I wanted something nicer and leather and very, very, very swish, and I'm in love with my costume now. And apparently, fans didn't go for the pink, which isn't why we changed it, because we didn't even know about it. We changed the costume because Doyle starts to get free will. And it's, it kind of worked hand in hand with when I, Brandy started getting, I, as Brandy, started getting more comfortable you know, I played it like Doyle is getting her own free will now, and she'd like to become more part of the seafarian culture, which is a little more earth tones and part of the crew, which is a uniform. Oh, boy. There's trouble. Yeah. I can look my best, and, and I'm real tough. I can flick 15 guys off of me with a flick of my wrist. It's like, who doesn't want to do that? Looky here. A hero. <laughs> hey, hero. How would you like your hair? Scorched or seared? 
You seem a little inexperienced for these streets. Hey, hold on. And I actually do all of my own fight scenes. I love it. I'm a green belt in kickboxing, and I'm also a dancer, so I have this coordination, and I'm, you know, I can do these things that they set up for us to do. And so I tend to do my own stunts on this show so far. I've been the only one doing them. And I, I prefer it because I like it. <laughs> in fact, I, there were some days in the very beginning of me coming onto the show where I got to fight so much. And I would say to Bob Ingalls, the producer, I love today I got to fight. <laughs> and they choreographed these fights so cool and it really works. And the stuntmen on the show are so great. They really sell your punches. And I've always liked doing my own stunts. I got to do a lot of my own stunts on The Invisible Man too. And I just, I really like to do it. So it had been very active. Uh, for a while because Harper, the little stinker, gets into so much trouble. So I was constantly having to protect him from these, you know, big guys. Um, but I've moved since from that just as, again, coming into my own as Doyle, who's becoming more part of Andromeda now. Um, but I'm ready for another fight scene. Doyle, no! And I have a really beautiful gun that I am the only one that has this style of gun. They put squibs all over me when I get shot at, which is so fun. I, I'm really like this feminine girl that loves this stuff. Because you know who's my total hero? Laura Croft. Yeah. Need to be here one day. So they put all these squibs all over me. And I, wa I walked right through this hallway, in fact, and got shot up. It's fun. I enjoy it.